Hello everyone and welcome back to Water Child Tarot. My name is Sarah and thank you for joining me today. As promised, I want to share with you a spread I've been doing um, for friends at the start of the new year. I did a bunch of these last year and I also did a bunch of readings this year, um, particularly as a fundraiser for my local library. I've also done a few one-offs for personal friends and um, it's been a really great experience. People have been very responsive to it and um, I think it's been enriching for them. It's been a really fun read for me um, as a tarot reader. There's not a lot of um, you know pressure with a really detailed question. Um, it's just kind of an overview of the year and so this is a card of the year reading and I'm going to show you how to do it today and also um, talk about some sample readings that um, I've done recently for people. So let's go down on the table and take a look at some cards. So this is the setup that I use and I will put the prompts in the description box below. But um, let's take a look at this. So the first step is to calculate the person's uh, card of the year based on their birth date. And when I'm reading for people on video chat like this, what I like to do is put out a blank index card, write their name at the top, and then put the current year, and then ask for the month and the day of their birth. So this person would have been born on January 4th. Add up these numbers um, in this way, so like a math equation, and then um, reduce that number down until you get a number between 0 and 22, um, and then that will be your card of the year. So for example, this person has a justice uh, year coming up in 2022. So if I were just doing a one-off reading um, for a single person, I would then go through my deck that I'm using and find the card and put that out in the center like this. So this becomes the focal card. Um, the deck that you see here is the Gaian Tarot, by the way. I've talked a lot about it and I'll put a link down below where you can uh, buy this. It is currently still in print. Um, but for the the library readings, um, the charity readings that I was doing, they were one-off quick fire ones. I only had about 15 minutes with each person. So what I found was helpful was to actually pull the majors from another deck and have those handy uh, next to me at my table. And that way, um, these are in order. This way I can calculate the card of the year and quickly flip through and find um, their card and then lay that out without having to dig through an entire deck and then reshuffle in order to do the reading. So that seemed to work quite well. Um, and uh, let's walk through this sample reading here. So I did also have, um, not on the table where they could see it, but I have this little prompt card out for me just to kind of remind me as I'm talking to pull the reading back into these prompts. So in the center here, we have the card of the year. Again, calculated on each individual's birth date, so it feels very personalized. And then the upper left uh, card is um, what aspect of the card of the year is most important. So you can see that each, each time we look at these cards, we're tying them back to this central significator card for their card of the year. And in this case, we have the Seven of Air, which would correspond with the Seven of Swords in this deck. It is an elemental-based deck, so we don't have the um, traditional suits. We have elemental suits. So Seven of Air is the most as important aspect of justice. And I related that to clear thinking, having a plan, uh, being able to see ahead a few steps. How can this person apply this energy of the Seven of Air to their life? And in 2022, and this um, Two of Fire card talks all about partnership. So finding someone that they can work with in order to um, bring about more justice in their life, whether that's um, someone to bounce ideas off of for internal work that they need to do, or whether it's maybe finding a person in their community that they could work with on some kind of community service project um, or helping, helping someone find justice. For the um, third prompt here, we have what obstacle is likely to arise 
And this person got the Seeker in the challenge position, which I think is a great card um, in a challenge position, especially when we're talking about um, justice and just the kind of naivete that we can face um, in trying to seek justice, uh, particularly on others' behalf. You know, we think we can be saviors, we think we can charge into a situation and know, know the right thing to do. Um, and that's not always the case, even if we have good intentions. So keeping an eye um, on the path ahead and really kind of tying back to this seven of air of having a plan um, and thinking carefully about what we're going to do before we take action. And then the fourth, the advice to face this challenge is the fourth position. And this person um, got the nine of air. And that's kind of um, a weird you know, card to get the Nine of Swords, the Nine of Air, as an advice card. Um, so this is why I like to do sort of open reading sometimes and not just focus on dictionary definitions, because um, when you get kind of a, a negative card in a positive position, it can be hard to reconcile that, or a positive card in a negative position. Like, what's the worst thing can that the, can, can happen? And you get the Ten of Cups, you know, it's, it's like, it can throw the reading off a little bit um, if you're relying too heavily on very fixed keywords for each card. So with this um, nine of air, I saw that the, you know, the, the advice here really is to, to concentrate and to focus and not to get to d distracted or to um, have kind of a rosy, you know, Pollyanna outlook, um, but to really concentrate. While this um, person here looks a bit like, you know, they may be having some anxiety or something, um, it's also possible that they're just really concentrating, really taking in the energy of that of the day or the event that's going on around them. So, you know, that was my advice was just to focus in um, and concentrate on this plan and this partnership and how that can bring about some positive change um, for 2022. So there's one example of a reading. All right, so our next reading looked like this. And again, we have justice as the central card of the year theme. Um, in this case, the person got what aspect is most important, and they received the Nine of Earth card for this position. So what aspect is most important? And that's to realize, I think, that the work of justice is never finished. Um, we've got a lot of, you know, a beautiful lavender field here. A lot of hard work has gone into planting this, cultivating it, caring for this crop throughout the season. But now we have to harvest it. Now there's even more work to do. And I liken this to this role of justice of you know the social awareness that's been going on social justice movement across the country and how I think a lot of us um, who may have been very naive and uh, unaware of some of the things that have been going on um, have had our eyes really reopened over the last year or so and we know um, that some of these deep uh, deep rooted problems in our culture are not just going to magically go away it's going to take a lot more hard work. So capitalizing on the justice year to contribute to that effort um, could be really positive for 2022. I happen to know this person. Um, I don't know her very well, but she she popped in uh, to this tarot reading and it's a small community. So I know she's active in the community um, and I use that in the reading as well. So when we move to the elder of water in the second position for how can I apply this energy, um, I just told her to use her wisdom, you know, use her experiences that she's accumulated thus far, use her natural emotional intelligence that she certainly has um, to continue to fight for causes that are important to her, particularly in our local community. For the challenge position, we got the five of fire this time, and fives are great in a kind of challenge position, right? They do break us up. They do challenge us to um, look at things in a different way. They're disruptive energy. And here we have someone breathing fire, and uh, she actually asked during the reading, she's like, oh, is that a bad card? And I was like, no, it makes perfect sense. You know, in a challenge position uh, with the five of fire, you're looking at impulsiveness. You're looking at, again, um, launching into something when you're not prepared, when you don't have a plan, kind of taking, taking notes from that previous reading. 
So just be aware that there is a lot of energy behind this and it needs to be directed energy. Otherwise it might blow up in our face, right? We might not be prepared for the consequences. So again, thinking carefully about um, how we're gonna use justice, justice uh, relying on our wisdom and our prior experience to apply that to the 2020 year projects or particularly you know, community service, that kind of thing. And then finally, the advice to face this challenge um, comes up with the four of water, and that's perfect to balance out the fire, the elemental here, the water and the fire. And also just, um, you know, this person is contemplatively looking down this well and taking a moment to reflect on maybe what they've done so far, um, some of their successes, some of their challenges in the past, and bringing that forward with this wisdom to apply that to this next year. So you can see how all the cards start to talk to each other in this spread and how they all are going to tie back to the central card. That's, you know, really the way this spread kind of works and how it sets you up for a general energy reading for the year. We're not necessarily going to talk about specific events. Obviously, the um, the querent, uh, the person we're reading for can come in and they can um, take this kind of general advice and then look at specific ideas or projects that they have lined up or specific areas of their life that they want to improve. And kind of based on this general overview, they can start to, um, you know, get the details in order for themselves. But um, let's look at another reading uh, with a different kind of card for our central focus. So our next querent got strength as her calculated card of the year. And this was a person I did not know at all. So I really had to do, you know, just a cold reading for them. Um, but it was a great read. Uh, in the first position, we have the uh, Elder of Air, um, and this older gentleman is playing the flute, and this person was also older. They were retired from uh, working life. They have adult children, so and they were learning to play a musical instrument. Um, so, you know, this works both as a metaphor for, uh, you know, relying on your own inner strength, your own, uh, wis again, wisdom and prior experience and strength of character in order to do the things that you would like to do to accomplish and advance um, your progress and to play to play through your projects and your things that you want to do with, with little effort. You know, um, this person to me looks like they are not uh, struggling at all to remember how to play the flute or to get the technical side of that down, they've they've mastered um, this musical instrument, and so you know that that makes a nice metaphor for you know mastering different things in our lives, but also specifically for her. Um, and so in talking about you know okay, I play musical instruments myself. I know that if you really want to um, advance and get better. You have to dedicate at least an hour a day to practice and you have to do it whether you feel like it or not. And so our second position of how can I apply this energy um, with the strength and the and the uh, the king of air or the elder of air is to do so dil diligently, but um, to do so also with a sense of excitement. So this is the child of fire. This would be the page of fire. So, you know, getting out your instrument every day or, you know, going back to that challenging situation or whatever it is that we're facing and look at it from a fresh perspective, bring some fresh energy into it um, every time that we sit down to work on that. So that was a, a fun um, a card. And again, to kind of balance out this element of the air and the fire. So now in this challenge position, we get the four of earth, which in this deck is depicted by a squirrel saving up nuts for the winter. And so, you know, that has positive connotations about being prepared for the future, making sure you have resources when times are tough and all of that. Um, and, you know, that positively ties back into strength about inner resources and those kinds of things. But in a challenge position, we have to think about what are the what are the tough parts of strength? And for me, that's be about being stuck and being stubborn, you know, sticking to sticking to the same routine, sticking to the same things or saving up resources just for yourself and not sharing them with others. Um, and so that's, you know, where we want to make sure that we're seeking balance here with ex exploration and dedication to our craft, but not getting so myopic that we're letting other things slide um, that we need to be paying attention to. 
And then for the guardian heir, and I and I thought it was pretty cool that we got a pair here. The the elder and guardian would be the king and queen. Um, we have the advice to face this challenge. So again, we get this idea of, um, and especially because she's got the owl here, she's looking right at us with a very clear expression on her face, you know, to use your inner, your inner wisdom uh, to know when to sort of stand your ground and when to find that childlike excitement to rejuvenate yourself and also the wisdom to just keep at it so that you can become um, more skillful in your pursuits or, uh, you know, in whatever it is that you're trying to take on this year. Um, and it's interesting because at that point, the person kind of interjected um, with a question about reconciliation and about, you know, maybe making amends for something. And she wasn't specific and I didn't want to pry. Um, but, you know, I do think that ties in too, is to be able to say, you know, maybe I was being too stubborn. Maybe I was being too strong or too uh, focused on myself in this situation. And, you know, I need, I owe you an apology or I need to change my behavior in some way. Um, you know, in a certain situation. So I thought that was cool that the cards kind of, you know, um, opened that up for her um, in this reading. And so for our last example, our querent uh, ended up with death as their card of the year for 2022. And I've done some other readings for people um, in prior years that had death cards. And it's always so fascinating to me when this one comes up in particular, because, um, you know, the first reaction, uh, even for me, um, is sort of like, whoa, you know, that's a that's a heavy card. That's a big topic. Um, and certainly for this person who had not was not that familiar with tarot, um, you know, was at first really put off by this. And I had to kind of find a way to kind of bring them back into the reading um, to so that they could listen um, and not just be sort of paranoid or fixated on this card. And so what I did was I kind of focused on the fact that this card comes in the middle of the major arcana. You know, it's number 13. It's not the end of the cycle. And so it is just an opportunity to let go of things that aren't serving you anymore. And that turned out to be a great theme for this particular reading. So in the eight, uh, the eight of earth ends up being in our first position, the aspect of of death that is most important. Now, um, normally, you know, we would see in this imagery um, someone working and kind of habitually producing uh, one item after another. Um, that's kind of the typical image. What I love about reading this deck is that it doesn't have the typical imagery, and we see that in three uh, out of the four cards here. So in the Eight of Earth here, we have um, a teacher uh, who's playing a drum and teaching a younger person to, um, to follow along. That's the way I read this card. Maybe that's her dad. Maybe that's just, you know, some, some person passing on this knowledge. And so if we talk about passing on knowledge with death, maybe it is something about passing on something so that you don't have to do it anymore. Um, teaching someone else to take up the reins of something so that you can let go of it. Um, and that worked really well with the Three of Air, which was our next card. How can I apply this energy of teaching? Well, it would be to document um, the process or the project or the work or the, the routine or whatever it is. Write it down, write some clear instructions for whoever you're going to pass this on to um, so that they can take that on and, and you don't have to deal with it anymore. You can let it go. Um, so that worked really well. And again, you know, if we had that heart um, with the three swords through it for this image, it would be harder for me to tell this story in this way. Um, but here we just have a gentleman uh, writing in his journal. And so, you know, while this could be um, that he's upset about a relationship and is, you know, writing out his feelings, maybe depending on the context. Um, here, I was just like, oh, you know, you're going to pass on the work, you're going to document it for the person. Very clear. So that's why I like decks that allow for this kind of open reading style. 
Moving on to the Elder of Error in the uh, challenge position here, this was actually took me a second to think uh, through clearly. Um, and what I got was that, um, so this is the obstacle that's likely to arise, is that this person may not want to let go. So they may see themselves as this resident expert and the person who still has to keep doing whatever this is. And they may not, it may not be very easy for them to pass on knowledge and document and let it go. Um, it might be something where they feel like they still have to hold on to it. They have to hold that knowledge with them. I see this person as um, someone, There's a, it's hard to see, but there's some skulls in the background and stuff. So this looks to me like, um, you know, a, a, a practitioner, some kind of, um, root worker or, you know, um, traditional practitioner of, um, it sort of looks South American or Mexican to me, um, just to, just to see from kind of the symbols back here. So, um, you know, so that kind of thing, being the guardian, the elder of this kind of medicine work and traditional knowledge, um, that kind of fed in with this idea of letting go and to train up someone else to take your place. So then in the final position, we have um, card number 15. And in this deck, it's called Bindweed. In most decks, it would be known as the devil. So again, a little bit tricky to interpret here. But the advice to face this challenge is to not get caught up to not get stuck in this process because you might feel like you're the only person who can do this, that you have to keep going no matter what, um, but you can pass this knowledge along. You can teach somebody else. You can write down all the steps and you can see it through to the next um, the next generation, the next person, what have you. Again, uh, this person was also a little bit older. So, you know, I can kind of say that um, because of the context of who they are and and this year coming up for them um you know if it was somebody that was in their 20s it might have had a different flavor to the reading but regardless i think the idea is to not feel stuck you know to 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 break free to allow yourself to break free and to not feel like you have to be the keeper of all this knowledge that you've accumulated so those are my uh, sample readings for the card of the year. Um, I hope that you will try this out either for yourself or for friends. Um, again, all you need to know is the month and the date of their birth. And then you add that up with the year that you wanna read for. Use that central card as your focal point or your significator, and then you can lay out cards around it. And you don't have to use these exact prompts. You could switch them up a little bit. You could add more cards if you want. But the idea here is just to paint a picture, a general energy for the, the year um, that you're focusing on, and then to think about how they could apply that energy in whatever it is that's coming up for them, whether they know what's coming up or maybe they don't have a clear plan for the next year, um, but they're looking for, okay, well, you know, this is a high energy year. This is a low energy year. You know, if you got, if you got something like the chariot, you know, it might be a ch an opportunity to push forward on things. If you got the hermit, it might be a year to hunker down and study and make plans. So that's kind of how this reading works. Um, I really like it, like I said, and if you would like to get a card of your reading with me, feel free to drop me a line. Uh, my email is in the about, the about tab on this channel. Um, but otherwise, I hope you try it for yourself and um, either leave me a comment with, you know, how it turned out um, or make a response video to this one if you decide to pull cards of the year for yourself or for your friends. So thank you again for joining me and I'll be back soon. I am going to do a card of the year reading for myself as well. Um, as I talked about in a previous video, I'm going to be sharing that here on the channel too. So hopefully um, I'll be able to work through that uh, and, it, and it'll make sense. It's always a challenge to read for yourself. Um, but you know, we'll see, we'll see what happens. So I'm going to post that before uh, January and uh, I will see you very soon. Thanks for joining me. Bye-bye.